limit good morning ladies and gentlemen on behalf of Capital Trust Research Private Limited, it gives me immense pleasure to welcome you to our research initiation webinar on Lanka IOC PLC. The recent introduction of the oil price formula together with the island-wide expansion of Lanka IOC's fuel distribution network is expected to ensure sustainability of earnings going forward. On the, on the macroeconomic front, a number of positive developments have taken place. The establishment of political stability, the commencement of international debt restructuring discussions, and the commencement of the decline in the country's official inflation rate have together created a strong backdrop for a gradual re-rating of the stock market. CCPI inflation, which peaked at 69.8% in September 2022, has already started to fall and indications that the inflation will continue to decline over the next few months, We should exert downward pressure on interest rates. Secondary market interest rates have already started falling, while the overnight liquidity, which recorded the shortfall of LKR 688 billion as of 27th April 2022, has now improved to a shortfall of only LKR 151 billion as of 17th of November 2022. These facts should improve liquidity for both financial system as well as the stock market. Meanwhile, the central bank governor has stated that action will be taken to ease the interbank liquidity in the coming weeks, while also strongly requesting commercial banks to reduce interest rates. We are pleased to remind you that Capital Trust Securities is ranked number one for the year 2021, financial year 2021-2022, and so far in 2022, in terms of transaction turnover, brokerage turnover, and number of transactions. Today's webinar is the 35th of a continuous series of webinars that Capital Trust Research Private Limited has been hosting. Now I'm pleased to introduce Mr. Hasit Aliyanage, Head of Research of Capital Trust Research Private Limited, and Mrs. Divya Kasichetti, Head of Corporate Finance of Capital Trust Partners Private Limited, who will make the presentations. They will be happy to answer those questions you may have at the end of the Q&A session. Over to you, Divya. Thanks, Prashani. Given the prevailing operating environment, with the implementation of a fuel price formula to reflect the fluctuations in global prices, along with the liberalization of the industry, we believe that Lanka IOC PLC is well positioned to record strong and sustainable earnings in the medium term. And therefore, we have included the stock in our research coverage. Before diving into the numbers, let's take a few minutes to better understand the operations of LIOC, its key business segments, and the industry dynamics. LIOC caters to approximately 20% of Sri Lanka's fuel demand. Sri Lanka's, it is the Sri Lanka's only private sector auto fuel retailer. As you may know, Sri Lanka's petroleum sector is a duopoly consisting of the state-run Ceylon Petroleum Corporation and LIOC. LIOC signed an MOU between CPC and LIOC's parent, Indian Oil Corporation Limited, in June 2002 and commenced operations in March 2003. Indian Oil Corporation currently owns 75.12% of the company. LIOC is involved in importation and distribution of automotive fuels, where they cater to approximately 20% of Sri Lanka's fuel demand. The company is also the second largest player in lubricants and is also involved in bunkering, supplying of bitumen and petrochemicals. In addition to these main business segments, LIOC owns 33% share in Ceylon Petroleum Storage Terminals Limited, a joint venture between Lanka IOC and CPC. LIOC acquired 49% of the shares in the newly formed joint venture Trinco Petroleum Terminal Private Limited, better known as TPTL. TPTL was formed for the development of 61 tanks, the related area, and allied facilities in the upper tank farm of China Bay Oil Tank Farm. 
LIOC has also entered into a modalities agreement with CPC and TPTL for the possession, development and use of the China Bay oil tank farm. This venture offers an opportunity to enhance their storage capacity and drive future revenue growth. Let's take a few minutes to understand the key business segments of LIOC. Automotive fuels is the main segment, which accounts for approximately 63% of total revenue in financial year 22. The company holds approximately 20% market share and distributes petrol, diesel, and a range of premium and branded fuels through 213 filling stations. A range of premium and branded fuels have been introduced by the company, where branded fuel and super diesel accounts for 15% of the segment's revenue. LIOC has obtained the necessary approvals to set up 96 new filling stations, of which the company targets to open eight a month from November 2022 onwards. LIOC operates in the lubricant sector and is the second largest player in lubricants with a market share of approximately 27%. The company supplies under its own brand Servo and the lubricants are used for automotive, marine and industrial applications. These products are distributed across the island through a widespread network of distributors, petrol sheds and servo shops. The company has its own state-of-the-art lube blending plant in Trincomalee with an annual capacity of 18,000 kiloliters and it was the first lube plant and laboratory to obtain ISO 9001 certification in Sri Lanka. The company commenced operations of their grease manufacturing plant in Trincomalee in mid-September 2022. This is Sri Lanka's first grease plant and has a manufacturing capacity of 3,000 metric tons. The product is expected to be priced very competitively and will be likely cheaper than the imports. LIOC is also the leading supplier of bitumen in Sri Lanka and supplies four variants for industrial and road construction purposes. However, with the slowdown in the local construction sector, the company is focusing on growing exports within this segment. The company is a leading bunker fuel supplier at Sri Lankan ports with approximately 33% market share. The company operates at the ports of Colombo and Gaul and is the only supplier to operate in Trincomalee. Petrochemicals is a relatively new segment which the company has diversified into. The company will supply products under their own brand, Propel. As reflected in the bar chart on this slide, historically, automotive fuels contribute majority of the top line and accounted for 63% of revenue in financial year 22. With the introduction of the fuel price formula, which captures the global prices, a significant increase in revenue from this segment is forecasted for financial year 23, with the segment expected to account for approximately 71% of LIOC's total revenue. The next biggest segment is bunkering, which accounted for 25.7% of total revenue in financial year 22. Contributions from this segment is broadly expected to remain at 24 to 25% in financial year 23. Lubricants accounted for 8.1% 8, 8 of revenue in financial year 22. We expect revenue of this segment to grow by 67% with the introduction of the new grease plant. Bitumen accounted for 3.13% of revenue in a financial year 22. Going forward, we expect a decline in this segment considering the recent slowdown in construction. The company, however, will continue to focus on growing exports within this segment. Of the total fuel consumed in Sri Lanka, approximately 60% is used by the transportation sector while 40% is used by power generation and other sectors. As reflected in the graph, restrictions imposed on new vehicle imports 
has resulted in a significant drop in new vehicle registrations in 2021 and the first three quarters of 2022. This coupled with the QR quota system introduced on the 16th of July, where a guaranteed weekly fuel quota is allocated to each vehicle, has resulted in a decrease in demand for automotive fuels. Fuel demand for the power generation sector, on the other hand, increased during the year. This was mainly due to fluctuations in hydropower generation due to dry weather conditions experienced early on in the year and consecutive breakdowns in Sri Lanka's main coal power plant. As reflected in the graph, historically, thermal power averaged at approximately 26% of total power generated in Sri Lanka over the last five years although it accounted for only 15.8% of total power generated in 2021. In terms of CEB operated plants, thermal oil power generated increased to 27.7% as at end September, before declining significantly to just 0.3% of total power generated due to high rainfall as at 31st October 2022. Fuel demand for the power generation sector increased, also due to CPC's inability to provide uninterrupted fuel to run generators during the power cuts. LIOC was a beneficiary of this situation, as there was an increasing demand during the last six months from industrial customers to operate their generators and ensure minimal disruption in their factories. LIOC supplied products to industrial companies and received payments in dollars, which in turn assisted them with procurement, given the forex shortages experienced in the market. With the reduction in power cuts, the revenue generated from the industrial segment is forecasted to decline from approximately 50% of total segmental revenue in the first quarter to 26% for financial year 23. The fuel price formula, which was abandoned a few years ago, was reintroduced on the 25th of May, 2022. This mechanism considers fluctuations in world oil prices and accordingly, retail prices of fuel are revised periodically. The cost-effective fuel pricing formula assisted in the partial ending and an uneven subsidy regime over the last two years. The implementation of the fuel pricing formula resulted in a record increase in fuel prices. As reflected in the graph, the prices of LP95, 92, auto diesel and super diesel significantly increased after the implementation of this mechanism in May 22. Prices were recorded at its highest level in June 2022. The new formula is based on six factors, which includes costs related to unloading, taxation, production, operational and administration costs, profit margin, and contribution to the fuel price stabilization fund. With the implementation of this dynamic formula, the strong profit margins of LIOC is able to be sustained in the medium to long term. Now that we have a better understanding of the local industry landscape, let's take a few minutes and review the trends in oil prices. As reflected in the graph, Brent crude oil prices touched its highest level since 2013 in March 2022, where prices were recorded above $130 per barrel. The significant price increase was due to the Russia-Ukraine war causing trade and production disruptions. Prices have since reduced to approximately $86 per barrel, backed on potential recessionary fears driving lower demand. On the supply side, however, OPEC has agreed to cut production by 2 million barrels per day in November, with further intervention expected in markets to show up prices. Based on the U.S. Energy Information Administration, Brent crude oil spot price is expected to average at about $93 per barrel in the fourth quarter of this year and increase to $95 per barrel in 2023, which is largely in line with ADB's forecast. Price fluctuations may be expected due to the possibility of petroleum supply disruptions, 
slower than expected crude oil production growth and slower than forecasted economic growth. The graph on this slide captures the annual average price for refined petrol and diesel prices. As reflected, annual average price of petrol was 78.5 US dollars and diesel was 76.7 US dollars in 2021. The refined petrol price increased marginally by 0.8% year on year from 90 US dollars per barrel on the 31st of December to 91 US dollars per barrel on the 31st of October 2022 based on Singapore plat prices, while refined diesel prices increased by over 44% year on year from $88 per barrel to $128 per barrel during the same period. This was mainly due to low refinery capacities and post-COVID energy demand crunched global oil supplies and pushed up prices. For the first eight months of the year, Sri Lanka's refined petroleum imports increased approximately 59.9% year-on-year to 2.79 billion US dollars mainly due to the price increases in diesel. Sri Lanka's only oil refinery in Sapugastanda was temporarily shut down many times during the year due to the severe foreign exchange crisis. Therefore, a significant portion of local demand was met through refined petroleum products, which benefited LIOC in 2022. Let's take a few minutes to discuss the changing landscape of the industry. At present, there are two players in the industry, CPC and LIOC. The automotive fuel industry will be liberalized and cabinet approval have been obtained allowing international companies to directly import and sell fuel in Sri Lanka in the backdrop of Sri Lanka's foreign exchange shortage. Through the liberalization and less dependence on CPC, a market-based pricing approach is expected to continue. This will lead to favorable, efficient, and a stable operating environment for all market participants, including LIOC, and will bring about stable and sustainable earnings for the industry players. Although initial interest has been received, new players are expected to take at least 12 to 18 months to commence operations. Despite the industry being liberalized, enabling new players to eventually enter the market, LIOC is well positioned to be a beneficiary of the changing industry landscape. The company has obtained approval to commence operations at 96 new filling stations and targets to open eight to 10 new filling stations per month from end November 22 onwards. This will increase their presence significantly across the island. In addition to the new sheds, LIOC is making headway to increase their storage capacity for both automotive and bunker fuels. This is being done through a joint venture with CPC, where LIOC holds 49% shareholding of TPTL. TPTL was set up in January 2022 to develop 61 oil tanks at the upper tank farm in Trincomalee. The detailed feasibility study is currently underway and as a first phase, the company hopes to refurbish 10 tanks with a capacity of 10,000 metric tons each. Phase one is expected to cost approximately 15 to $20 million. As a second phase, the remaining 51 tanks are expected to be refurbished at an estimated cost of 42 to $50 million. The storage capacity is in addition to the 14 tanks that can be used by LIOC in the lower tank farm on a 50-year lease. The enhancement in storage capacity will contribute in strong revenue generation for LIOC in the medium term and offer opportunities both in Sri Lanka and offshore. In addition to the 96 new sheds in the pipeline, LIOC has requested for similar number of new sheds that will be issued to new players. This will enable the company to further increase its presence and consolidate operations, which in turn will result in an increased market share over the medium term. Given its first mover advantage, established brand presence, 
built up infrastructure and customer loyalty built over its 20 year presence, LIOC is well positioned to be a market leader post liberalization. Now let's move on to the lubricant segment. Operating conditions remain challenging for the lubricants industry. Rising cost, reduced activity levels due to lockdowns, and the ban on vehicle imports contributed negatively to overall industry growth. Industry volume saw a downward trend during 2016 to 2020 before increasing 13.5% year on year to 68,018 kiloliters in 2021. However, industry value increased 48% year on year from a low base in 2020 to 40.69 billion rupees in 2021, partly due to the price increases. Nine new players were allowed to enter the lubricants industry, as a result of which the total count has grown to 25 players. LIOC is the second largest lubricant player in Sri Lanka. The company supplies under its own brand Servo, and the lubricants are used for automotive, marine, and industrial applications. As reflected in the bar chart, Chevron continues to be the market leader with over 50.97% market share in the first half of 2022. LIOC is the next dominant player with 26.79% market share based on the second quarter figures and 22.41% based on the first half of 2022. Other players include ExxonMobil Asia Pacific and laughs with a market share of 7% and 4.5% respectively. LIOC outperformed the lubricants industry, where volumes grew at a CAGR of 5.65% in 2016 through to 2021, versus the industry volume growth of only 1.04% during the same period. This trend continued in the first half of 2022, where LIOC recorded an increase in volumes of 3.96% year on year compared to the contraction experienced in the industry of approximately 5.46%. Backed by the volume growth and price increases, LIOC's revenue in this segment grew by 91.95% year on year in calendar year 2021 and 87.9% year on year in the first half of calendar year 2022, exceeding industry growth of 48.21% and 50.69% respectively. As reflected in the graph, LIOC recorded lubricant sector revenue of 6 billion rupees in calendar year 21 and 4.68 billion rupees in first half of calendar year 22. The blending plant located in Trincomalee clocked the highest ever production in the history of its operations, with a production capacity of 18,000 kiloliters capacity per year. The plant is operating at near full capacity. The enhanced revenue in this segment was driven by the expansion of its distributor network to 31, expansion of servo shops to 525, compounded with a greater institutional sales. LIOC plans on continuing expansion of the distribution network and introduction of new eco-friendly products. The industry as a whole is expected to see a pickup only once Sri Lanka's economic outlook improves and fuel limits on vehicles are removed, which is currently limiting industry growth. With the commencement of operations in the grease plant and the lubricant distribution, LIOC's revenue from this segment is expected to grow by 67% in financial year 23 to 12.15 billion rupees. Moving on to bunkering, the four main players in the industry, including Lanka Marine Services, a subsidiary of John Keels Holdings, Haley's Advantis, McLaren Group, and LIOC, operate in the highly competitive environment, catering to shipping line operators and bunker brokers and agents. LIOC has approximately 33% market share and caters to Colombo and Gaul. It is the only player to cater to Trincomalee Port. The product portfolio includes low sulfur fuel oil, IF4380 CST, and low sulfur marine gas oil. 
the company supplied 166,000 metric tons of bunker fuel during financial year 22. As reflected in the graph, marine fuel prices were high from April through to June and thereafter started trending downwards in June through to September 2022 before seeing an uptick in October. Industry volumes increased during financial year 22, however, have not touched pre-pandemic levels. Ship traffic witnessed a declining trend from 2017 to 2021, and January to August 2022 saw a further decline of 5.99% year-on-year to 2,651 vessels. Container handling, which grew 5.75% year-on-year in 2021, saw a decline of 2.43% year-on-year to 4.68 million TEUs in January to August 2022. This directly translates to the bunker market activity, and although pricing remains high, volumes will be lower than the previous years. In line with the overall industry uptick in 2021 and higher oil prices, strong revenue growth was recorded by key players, LIOC and Lanka Marine Services. As reflected in the graph, LMS is the market leader, recording 32.5 billion rupees in turnover, while LIOC recorded 23.09 billion in financial year 22. However, LIOC recorded stronger growth with revenue increasing 109% year on year compared to 79% recorded by LMS. Limited availability of bonded tank space, which hampers industry competitiveness, was a key challenge. However, going forward, regional trade activity and increased availability of bonded tank space are expected to support volumes. The capacity addition of 60,000 metric tons at the port of Hambantata and the addition of a 3,200 metric ton storage tank at the Jaya Container Terminal in Colombo in financial year 22 increased the storage capacity for bunker fuel. The enhanced storage capacity addition enabled players to import larger parcels of bunker fuel and supply at competitive prices. Going forward, competition may intensify, with Hambantota port being positioned as a strategic bunker operator in the region. Given its close proximity to one of the busiest sea routes coupled with the port's partnership with top global player Sinopec, to provide high quality fuel oils is expected to make Sri Lanka's energy market more competitive. However, considering Sri Lanka's strategic location and distinct advantage of being the only player operating at the Trincomalee port, LIOC is poised to reap benefits from industry growth and is expected to maintain and even enhance its market share in the short term. LIOC is the market leader in the bitumen business and supplies to industrial and road construction purposes. Other players within the industry includes Access Engineering and CPC, which commenced bitumen production at the country's sole refinery located in Sapugas Kanda in 2018. The segment recorded a sales volume of 24,289 metric tons compared to 18,096 metric tons recorded during the previous year. As a result of the economic downturn and slowdown in construction, the domestic market sales is likely to witness a significant decline during the year. However, the company is actively focusing on strengthening exports. I will now hand over to Hasita to go through the financial forecast, outlook and valuation. We will be back in one minute.
Thanks, Divya, for the detailed overview on LIOC and its subsegments. Now we'll go through our forecast for LIOC subsegments and the group as a whole and the associated valuations. With the removal of the fourth formula, LIOC's revenue recorded a declining trend from FY19 to FY21, mainly led by the limited volume growth in the automotive fuel sector due to the losses per litre on certain fuels. Given the unfavorable operating environment, the management limited the growth of its outlet network. In FY22, LIOC's revenue turned around significantly, with a strong growth of 34.89% year-on-year in FY22, mainly led by the lubricants, bunkering, and bitumen se sectors. The operating environment changed completely in FY23 when the rupee was floated and there was a severe dollar shortage leading to CPC not being able to import fuel. Then LIOC agreed to supply the required fuel as long as the market-based pricing mechanism was introduced. By bringing back the full formula, LIOC was able to increase its revenue in 1Q FY23, recording revenue growth of a staggering 196.11% year on year to 49.93 billion rupees. With further upward pricing revisions and increase in LIOC's market share in the second quarter of FY23, the company recorded revenue growth of 326.85% year on year to 87.96 billion rupees. This resulted in total revenue of 137.89 billion rupees, a 268.01% growth on a year-on-year -year basis in the first half of FY23. This was mainly led by growth in the automotive full segment. Key growth, growth drivers include increase in market share, from 12% in FY22 to the current 20%, led by CPC being ad adversely impacted by the existing foreign exchange shortage. Further, LIOC commenced catering to the requirements of the industrial sector, which was around 50% of the total fuel demand. While the company was supplying fuel to exporters who run their generators during the extended power cuts that were prevalent in the first half of FY22. In addition, they also provided fuel such as diesel to exporters to ensure uninterrupted SAF transport. These were not focus areas previously, but given the exporters wanted uninterrupted fuel, they paid LIOC in USD, enabling the company to increase its dollar revenue during the first half of FY23. Following the significant rupee depreciation, LIOC raised prices twice during March 2022 before CPC increased prices significantly in May 2022. In addition to the co-contributing automotive fuels, other segments such as bunkering, lubricants, bitumen, and petrochemicals also supported growth. As can be seen on the graph on the left, the company only added six new outlets to its network between FY18 and FY22. But with the reintroduction of the full formula, and favorable operating environment, the company obtained approval to add 96 new sheds at an investment of 50 million rupees per shed, amounting to a total capex of 5 billion rupees. We forecast the company to add 34 new filling stations during the second half of FY23, with the remaining 62 being added in FY24. Considering LIOC's financial position and expansion of the outlet network, we forecast the company increase in market share further in the second half of FI23 and generate further volume and profit margins. LIOC branded fuel segment includes products such as Extra Mile, Extra Premium Euro 3. It should be noted that the branded fuel segmental profit margins are higher than the standard 92 octane petrol and auto diesel. Therefore, the company has been strategically increasing the revenue contribution of branded fuels from 9% in FY17 to 14% in FY22 by converting petrol and diesel sales to branded fuels. Due to CPC's lack of dollar liquidity since March 2022, CPC sheds have had limited stock of super diesel and 95 octane petrol. Also given the lack of fuel in the market in the first half of FY23, the company converted 22% of its users 
from unbranded petrol to branded to branded petrol and 15% of users from unbranded diesel to branded diesel. This enabled the company to operate with strong margins in the first half of FY23. The same is expected to continue in the second half of FY23 as well. Moving on to the automotive fuel segmental revenue forecast for FY23, higher fuel prices on a year-on-year -year basis through the fuel formula, higher market share within the segment, and the addition of 34 new filling stations is forecasted to boost FY23 automotive full revenue by 246% on a year on year basis. Due to the inter monsoon rains and higher contribution of hydroelectric generation, the power interruptions have reduced in the third quarter of FY23. As a result, we expect full sales to exporters to decrease in the second half of FY23 as requirement for fuel to run generators will decline. As a result, we conservatively forecast the industrial segment contribution to revenue to significantly de decline in the second half of FY23, compared to circa 40% contribution in 2Q FY23. We have factored in marginal volume growth in the fourth quarter of FY23, considering the possible improvement in economic activity improvement in dollar liquidity, facilitating increase in full imports, and possibly a further relaxation of full quotas. In order to ensure the sustainable profit growth in the medium term, the company is embarking on the development of its joint venture with CPC with regard to the Trinco Petroleum Terminal. A joint venture was set up in January 2022, where LISC holds 49% shareholding with CPC holding the remaining 51%. The joint venture will facilitate the development of 61 oil tanks at the upper tank farm in Trincomalee. 10 new tanks, each with capacity of 10,000 metric tons, will be refurbished as part of the first phase. The feasibility study is underway and the capex requirement is being finalized and expected to be in the range of 15 to $20 million. Increasing storage capacity that can be used across bunkering and, and auto folders. This is expected to positively benefit the company and fuel consistent future growth across multiple verticals. As part of the second phase, 51 <coughs> tanks will be refurbished, where the total cost is estimated at US dollars 42 to 50 million adding another total capacity of 510,000 metric tons of storage. Moving on to the lubricant segment, as Divya mentioned before, LIC has a blending plant with 18,000 metric tons capacity that operates almost at full capacity. LIC plans to aggressively grow its distribution network by increasing distributors within each district with volume-based incentives. The company managed to see strong growth in market share from 12.56% in, in 2019 to 22.41% in the first half of calendar year 2021, while growing its distribution network consistently as depicted in the graph below. The customer touch points increased from 736 in FY20 to 873 in FY22. Notably, LIOC's 18,000 metric ton blending plant in Finkamali almost operated at full capacity in FY22. Due to lack of fuel in the first quarter of FY23, vehicle movements were restricted, which resulted in a dip in volumes, with a bounce in volumes expected in the remainder of FY23. LIOC commenced operations in its own grease plant with a capacity of 3,000 metric tons in the second quarter of FY23 and plans to provide better quality product at more competitive prices. This is expected to increase the revenue contribution to the lubricant segment in the second half of FY23. To give some context on the market opportunity, Sri Lanka imported 2,461 kiloliters of greasers in 2021, and sales volume was recorded at 2,509 kiloliters. Grease revenue in the lubricant industry amounted to rupees 
2.1 billion in 2021. Given the LKR depreciation of 80% since March 2022, the current market size of the Greece segment should be over 3 billion. LIC plans to save foreign exchange by catering to the entire local requirement of Greece to its new plant. The Greece plant is expected to contribute to operations from the third quarter of FY23. Having discussed the outlook for the company's main segments, let's now look at the forecasted revenue for the group in FY23. The forecasted revenue growth is mainly led by the following factors. As discussed previously, the automotive fuel segment is expected to record 246% year-on-year revenue growth in FY23, led by its strong financial position and availability of US dollars for the continuous import of imports in comparison to CPC in the current economic backdrop. We have also conservatively factored in significantly low contribution from the industrial fuel segment in the second half of FY23 due to low number of power interruptions rolled out at present. We have also factored in revenue growth and increase in market share through the addition of 34 new filling stations expected in the second half of FY23. We have also factored growth in revenue from the bunkering segment, given its 33% market share and strong performance through the lubricant segment led by the servo brand and contribution from the Greece plant in the second half of FY23. Other segments such as bitumen segment is expected to remain relatively subdued in FY23 due to infrastructure related expenses being curtailed by the government and the relatively smaller petrochemical segment contribution being immaterial to our FY23 forecast. As a result, we forecast group revenue for LIOC at 277 billion rupees for FY23 and impressive 207.96% growth year on year. Due to the government not implementing a full formula previously, the GP margins were historically low, low where the company was more or less incurring losses on the automotive fuel segment and making profits through lubricants, bunkering and bitumen segments. The group's gross profit margins were low as a result, between 1.97% to 8.6% during FY17 to FY21. This increased to 9.83% in FY22, led by higher market share, increasing prices of auto fuels in line with market rates in March 2022, and increased contribution from the lubricants and bunkering segments. In 1Q FY23, the GP margins were recorded at a high of 31.02% as a result of the steep rupee depreciation, resulting in selling prices being increased in line with market rates, and inventory at hand, which was brought in prior to the depreciation, being costed at a lower price. As expected, the GP margins normalized to 18.52% in the second quarter of FY23, given the reflection of the increasing cost of sales. As a result, the GP margins increased significantly to 23.05% in the first half of FY23, given the implementation of the full price formula. As a result of low volumes generated through the industrial segment in the second half of FY23, a segment that operates with higher margins, we conservatively forecast GP margins to gradually reduce to 15% in the second half of FY23, an average at 19.11% in FY23. As a result of low GP margins over FY17 to FY21, as mentioned before due to the lack of pricing formula on full, EBIT margins too were relatively low, ranging from a negative 1.52% to 3.88% in FY17 to FY21. Operating margins are recorded at 11.44% CAGR over FY17 to FY22 and saw a staggering 169.51 times year-on-year -year increase in operating profit and a 3.25 times quarter-on-quarter -quarter increase in profit in the first quarter of FY23. The operating profit in the first quarter of FY23 was recorded at a staggering rupees 
13.25 billion due to significant change in the operating environment with strong GP margins. With the continued improvement in the operating environment and increase in market share, in the second quarter of FY23, LIOC saw a 52.96 times increase on a year-on-year -year basis in EBIT to rupees 14.19 billion with a reported EBIT margin of 16.14%. We forecast an operating profit growth of 8.21 times on a year-on-year -year basis to rupees 44.43 billion in FY23, mainly led by the significantly higher GP margins and EBIT margins at 16.04% compared to 19.90% in the first half of FY23. <coughs> Analyzing the cash flow statement, <coughs> Analyzing the cash flow statement of the company, we noted that the cash generated from the operations increased 234% year on year to an impressive 27.58 billion rupees in the second quarter of FY23. For the first half of FY23, the cash generated from operations was recorded at 23.2 billion rupees. In order to give some context to the change in the operating environment and the impressive financial position of the company, Cash generated from operations was negative 1.65 billion rupees in the first half of FY22. We forecast cash generated from operations at a staggering 50.54 billion rupees in FY23, in comparison to a negative cash flow of rupees 2.28 billion in FY22. Given the strong cash flow generated through operations, LIOC utilized its utilized it to deleverage its balance sheet and reduce debt levels in the first half of FY23. Given the prevailing high interest rate environment, the company repaid 16.5 billion rupees of interest bearing borrowings in the first half of FY23. As a result, interest bearing borrowings, which was recorded at 25.78 billion rupees as of 31st March 2022, significantly reduced to 9.28 billion rupees as of 30th September 2022. We forecast cash and short-term investments at 42.02 billion as of 31st March 2023, compared to 26.32 billion in the first half of FY23. The company could potentially utilize its strong cash balance for capex associated with the setting up of new sheds and the Trinkamuli Tank Farm joint venture. In addition, the company can potentially increase the dividend payout ratio to repatriate profits with parents IOC in India. As stated before, the company could potentially utilize its strong cash balance to finance its capex requirement in FY23 and FY24. The company forecasts to set up 34 new sheds in FY23 incurring a capex of 1.7 billion rupees. This expected result in a total capex for FY23 amounting to 1.86 billion rupees. In FY24, we expect the company to incur additional capex of 3.1 billion rupees to add 62 new shares and also infuse 10 to 15 million dollars into the Trinco Petroleum Terminal Joint Venture as phase one to refurbish 10 storage tanks and set up the required piping network in Trincomalee for distribution. As per management, phase one of the Trinco Petroleum Terminal is expected to be completed in calendar year 2023. The total capex can be funded using the strong net cash balance of 32.73 billion rupees, forecasted as of end of FY23. Management also communicated that a further 51 tanks will be refurbished as part of phase two of the project at an estimated cost of 42 to 50, 42 to 50 million dollars, but timelines for phase two aren't finalized at present. LIOC's debt to equity ratio and interest costs are significantly lower and better managed than CPC, which we will touch upon later in the presentation. 
As mentioned in the previous slide, a LIOC debt level dropped from 27.53 billion rupees as of end of F 1Q FY23 to just 9.28 billion as of end of second quarter FY23, resulting in debt to equity ratio of 20.46%. We expect debt to equity ratio to improve further to 17.71% by the end of FY23. Despite settling 16.5 billion of debt, we forecast interest costs to increase 132.92% year on year in FY23, mainly led by higher interest rates and increase in working capital given the increase in fuel prices in LKR term. The net cash position, which is cash and cash equivalents, less debt was recorded at an impressive 17.04 billion rupees as of the end of the first half of FY23. We forecast this to increase to a staggering 32.73 billion rupees by the end of FY23. As explained earlier, in the presentation, due to favorable operating environment within the automotive fuel segment, the bunkering and lubricant segments, the company's net earnings increased by staggering 39.18 times on a year-on-year -year basis in the first half of FY23 to rupees 22.28 billion. This itself is 4.62 times the full year's net earnings in FY22. We forecast LIOC to record strong net earnings of 39.02 billion in FY23, a 709.9% year-on-year growth in earnings, in contrast to its historic net earnings stagger of 9.47% in FY20, FY17 to FY22. Higher GP margins compared to the past, led by the improvement in the operating environment and the increase in market share. Through the addition of 34 new sheds are the key drivers of our forecast. The key growth catalyst can be summarized as increase in automotive full market share, significant expansion in the number of full stations, and the consolidation of its presence in the bunkering and lubricant verticals. <clears throat> Just to give investors a basic understanding of the automotive full market, we have put together two slides capturing certain KPIs of LIOC and CPC. As you can see on the graph on the right, gross profit margins and PBT margins of LIOC outpace that of CPC in FY22. Looking at the graph on the left, you can see that LIOC's revenue growth too outpaced CPC in FY22 due to the contribution from the lubricant and the bunkering subsegments. There are 1,403 filling stations owned by CPC and LIOC in total, spanning across the country. LIOC owns 213 of them, amounting to 15.18% of the total number of filling stations, while CPC owns the remaining 1,190 outlets. By adding another 96 full stations over the next 12 months, LIOC will own 20% of the total number of filling stations which might result in market share increasing from the current 20% to an additional 22%. As known by investors, CPC's weak financial position is mainly due to extremely high finance costs of rupees 25.64 billion and a foreign exchange loss of 33.22 billion in calendar year 2021. Displayed here are the profit per litre generated by CPC as of 13 November 2022 for different full types. It should be noted that the profit per litre for LIOC will vary from CPC due to many reasons. Let's have a look at the contributing items. For example, LIOC pays a premium similar to that of CPC on the average flats prices due to the impact on the major rating institutions downgrading Sri Lanka and the applicable credit risk due to the existing foreign exchange shortage in the country. When looking at the main operating cost margins, it is fair to assume both LIOC and CPC margins are broadly in line. 
allows its operating margins are expected to be slightly better due to the higher operating efficiencies. We don't expect operating cost margin to deviate too much between the two companies, even though salary cost for CPC is far greater, as CPC controls 83% of the total sales volume. The main differentiator between the two entities is LIOC's low finance cost per liter. It is a key contributor to LIOC's higher profit margins per liter. To give some context, LIOC's finance costs were significantly lower at rupees 1.16 billion in FY22 versus CPC's 25.64 billion rupees. This gap would widen even more as LIOC debt was notably lower at 25.78 billion as of end of FY22 and only 9.28 billion as of 30th September 2022 versus CPC's debt of 693.04 billion as of end of FY20 as of end of 2021. As previously mentioned, we are forecasting a 207.96% gain in revenue for the company in FY23 to 277 billion rupees. Accordingly, given the favorable operating environment and increase in market share to 20%, we forecast EBIT to increase to 44.43 to billion rupees, a 721% year on year increase. Net profit to equity holders is forecasted to increase to 39.02 billion rupees in FY23, a 709.9% year on year increase. At a market price of 182.25 rupees, the share is trading. At an attractive PER of 2.49 times FY23 forecasted net earnings. Assuming a dividend payout ratio similar to FY22 of 24.86%, we forecast a dividend payout of 18.19 rupees, resulting in dividend yield of a very attractive 9.98%. As we have stated in our previous presentation and webinars, it should be noted that the fair value is a reflection of the fundamental net earnings forecast for FY23 and does not consider the investment sentiment or adverse impact to the stock market sentiment resulting from the possible adverse economic conditions in the future. It should be noted that the fair value is not a target price and the share price may not reach its fair value. Before we start with the key considerations for the valuation, it's best to restate some of the salient features that drive our valuation. Firstly, it is LIOC's strong financial position that should be considered given the strong net cash position of 32.73 billion rupees forecasted for FY23. This results in a very low debt to equity of 17.71% forecasted for FY23. As mentioned before, the company enjoys a higher profit margin compared to CPC as long as the pricing formula for fuel continues and the company will generate strong profits in the future. In addition, the management is increasing the contribution from the high margin branded fuel segments that will ensure strong GP margins in the future. With the company adding 96 fuel stations over the next 12 months, the company will increase market share compared to the current market share of 20%, which again will drive growth in profitability. As stated in the previous slide, the company trades attractively at 2.49 times FY23 net earnings. In comparison to a significantly higher historic PER, which ranged from 4.29 times to 22.97 times during FY19 to FY22. We have conservatively assigned a PER of five times in line with the broader market PER when arriving at the fair value multiple. The reason for a lower multiple is considering the risk associated with the liberalization of the auto fuel market, as well as the political influence on the industry in deciding whether the full price formula will be continued indefinitely. At a PR of five times, we arrive at a fair value of rupees 365.75 with an upside of 
0.69% from the current price of 182.25 rupees. But as mentioned before in the webinar, if the liberalization of the industry does happen and the private sector participants increases its market share and the country is less reliant on the CPC, it is most likely that the market-based pricing approach will continue in the future. In such a situation, LIOC's earnings will be sustainable for the foreseeable future. If that is the case, there's a possibility that the company will be re-rated with a higher PER multiple in the future. Considering the higher capex in FY23 required to expand its outlet network, we maintain dividend payout ratio at FY22 levels at 24.86%. At this results in an attractive dividend yield of 9.98% in FY23. This is the end of our presentation on LIOC. Now back to Prashani for the Q&A. We thank you, Hasita Divya and the Research Division for their valuable insights. Now, Hasita and Divya will take up the questions sent to the chat. Thanks, Prashani. Uh, before we commence with the uh, Q&A, we would like to draw investors' attention to a few points. So we have carried out our research and forecast based on the information that is uh, publicly available. However, uh, we must caution investors that there is a significant political risk that is present in this particular industry. So on certain occasions, uh, say before an election or something like that, there could be changes in the market price formula. Uh, there could be new taxation changes which affects the industry. So all of that has to be considered before making your investment decisions. Um, uh, yeah, sorry. just adding to what Divya mentioned, in our forecast as well, uh, uh, we have accounted for 34 new sheds opening in the fourth quarter of FY23, uh, and then another 62 new sheds opening across FY24. Uh, but obviously, uh, for these 34 new sheds to open, there are different timelines associated with it. Uh, there can be de delays in terms of getting various approvals, uh, so, although we have assumed that coming in in the fourth quarter, there might be deviation on that depending on, let's say, certain timelines. So that needs to be factored in as well uh, in due course. Uh, uh, once we get more information from management, we will update our forecast on that if there are any material changes. Okay, so let's move on to the question. Um, so we have a question from Mr. Jayasekara. Uh, LIOC recorded 9.9 .9 billion rupees in the first quarter and 12 billion rupees in the second quarter. Are these earnings sustainable and likely replicated in the next two quarters? Hasid, can you take that question? Please? Yeah, sure. So um, I think there are a few more questions on the GP margins, which will uh, uh, go into more detail uh, in the next few questions. But obviously in the first quarter with the rupee depreciation, uh, the margins were very high. Uh, because the inventory was uh, acquired at a lower rupee cost. Uh, so then in the second quarter, margins normalized around 18.5%. Uh, <clears throat> then in our forecast, what we're assuming is, we're conservatively assuming margins to uh, ease to around 15% GP. Uh, so uh, that will happen in third quarter. And then in the fourth quarter, we're assuming the new sheds coming in, uh, uh, allows the market share to increase from around 20% to around 22% sort of uh, range, uh, which will increase earnings again. So uh, in the third quarter, we're expecting a decline in profitability compared to the second quarter, uh, and then uh, a pickup in the fourth quarter. So yes, uh, uh, earnings are sustainable, uh, but still uh, slightly lower than what was reported in the second quarter. Thanks, Asika. Um, there's another question from uh, Mr. Silva. 
in the next financial year, how do you expect the company to perform? Uh, I'll take that question. Uh, so as we mentioned earlier, the profitability on the company is largely dependent on the continuation of the fuel pricing formula, because that is what's really reflected. They want the market price being reflected. So as long as this formula continues, it is likely that they will be able to sustain their profitability levels. Also, another factor that needs to be considered um, is that there is an expectation of 60 plus new sheds that should come in by financial year 24. However, uh, there could be delays in setting these up uh, because of approvals, construction delays, things like that. So that also needs to be kept in mind. Um, a, a positive is the increase in storage capacity through TPTL. Uh, this does provide them an opportunity to be able to source larger parcels at uh, competing very competitive prices and uh, give them opportunity uh, to supply both locally as well as offshore. Uh, so all of these factors will determine uh, the profitability going forward. Uh, there's a question from Mr. Pereira. What was the basis of the valuation why was only a PE of five times used for the fair value? Ahasita, can you take this question? Sure. Uh, as uh, Divya mentioned at the start of this uh, uh, Q&A session, <coughs> excuse me, uh, there is a uh, quite a bit of political risk associated with this sector. Uh, the government uh, uh, can always uh, uh, change and opt away from the whole full pricing formula. They can bring in various taxes, surcharge taxes, etc. Uh, in before elections, uh, for example. So there is that element of risk associated with the forecasted earnings. Uh, for that reason, uh, we have uh, uh, used a lower PE. And also, uh, as we mentioned in the presentation, there's a risk of liberalization as well, although that might take a few years. Uh, it, uh, for new players to enter, it might take even two to three years. So. Uh, if that happens, then obviously market forces will come into play. There might be undercutting on prices to establish uh, and gain certain amount of market share from the new players. Uh, but that will only affect uh, FY25 uh, and FY26. So that was the reason we use a low PE because of the associated risks. Thanks, Asper. Uh So there's a question from Mr. Kennecone. I think you largely touched on this. Um, so the question is, with the opening up of the industry and new players entering the market, can LIOC continue to record strong performance? When will the oligopoly on fuel end with the changes to the legal framework governing petroleum? Uh, so just to add to what Hasita uh, previously said, uh, liberalization of the industry was announced uh, somewhere in June this year. Uh, for new players to enter the industry, we believe it will take some time, at least 18 to 24 months, considering the approvals required, the infrastructure that has to be put up uh, for retail elements and things like that. But once new players do uh, enter the industry, uh, various uh, strategies might be adopted to uh, gain market share, and that will have to be analyzed and assessed at that point in time. Uh, there's a question from Mr. Dinesh Pereira. Uh, what is the expected bottom line in the coming quarter? Uh, Hasita, can you take this question? Yeah, as I mentioned before, uh, we have assumed a reduction in profitability. I think in the first quarter, they did around 9.8 billion. Uh, and in the second quarter, they did about 12.3 billion. Uh, we're assuming around 7.6 billion in the third quarter, which is... Uh, uh, due to the conservative GP margins uh, that we have assumed. Uh, and then uh, we're expecting earnings to uh, increase again in the fourth quarter to around 9 billion uh, with the uh, with the new sheds coming uh, live. So those are the <coughs> assumptions we have used. Uh, so we're assuming 39 billion profitability for the uh, FY23. And uh, they have done 22 0.2 billion already in the first half. So we're assuming lower earnings, but still strong earnings in the second half of FY23. Thanks, Asta. <clears throat> uh, there's another question from Mr. Dinesh Pereira. Is the company's tax arrangement going to change under the new IRD framework? Um, I'll take that question. Uh, so um, 
it's our understanding that the company has a BUI agreement um, and uh, in line with that agreement, the taxation applicable for them uh, will be 15% going forward as well. Um, there's another question from Mr. Dinesh Pereira. Uh, will LIOC enter the uh, LPG gas market? Uh, so at the moment, um, based on the information available to us, uh, we, we believe that they will not enter the LPG gas market. Uh, but we are not privy to any other information at this point in time. Uh, there's a question from uh, Mr. Stevenson Fernando. Uh, in the first quarter, gross profit margins uh, were above 31% and subsequently reduced to 18%. Uh, what is your expectation going forward? How do you view the recent margin contraction in the second quarter, even though market rates were significantly down during the quarter? Do you expect the contraction to continue? Uh, Hasita, can you take this question? Uh, sure. So just to give you a backdrop, uh, the company usually has one month's inventory uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, auto falls. So when the rupee was 200 rupees I mean, uh, per dollar, uh, the cost of the inventory for that one month was much lower. So when the rupee was depreciated and then they revised pricing, um, <clears throat> There was a one-off gain in that first quarter. That's why the GP margin in the first quarter was around 31%. And then in the second quarter, again, uh, there was a very high contribution from the industrial segments with the various power shortages, where the exporters were relying on LIOC to uh, fund uh, both their staff transport and the running of generators, the full required for that. So that was priced in dollars. So uh, there was 50% of auto full sales was to these industrial players in dollars where the margins were higher. So in the second quarter, we saw uh, margins normalized lower than 31% to 18.5%. Uh, but now with uh, more with low number of power cuts, et cetera, uh, they're, they're expecting a reduction on these industrial sales to reduce considerably from this 40% uh, uh, previously so with that we're expecting the gp margins to ease out uh, to reduce even more uh, where assume considerably assuming around a 15 percent gp margin for the second half of fy23 so those are assumed margins and that should continue uh, to uh, to the second half thanks Aspen. uh there's a question from mr tenacon how is the company <laughs> managing procurement with the fx shortage um so let me take that question. Uh, the company uh, has uh, US dollar receivables from the industrial segment because especially during the dry season uh, for the running of their generators, various exporters and industrial companies uh, do source from LIOC. In the first quarter, I think that accounted for almost 50% of that segment's revenue. Um, even though in the wet season, this comes off uh, quite a bit because there's no disruption in their operations uh, because of continuation of the power. During the dry season, this will continue and they will receive the um, US dollars. Other than that, uh, they also have dollar receivables through their bunkering operation um, and therefore uh, are able to use that for procurement purposes. Uh, there's another question relating to procurement itself. Do they source fuel only from their parent? Um, so it is our understanding that um, they actually issue tenders and it's a competitive bidding process. And for the last year or so uh, that they have not necessarily sourced from the parent, they go with the lowest bid. Um, there is a question from Mr. Harsha Fernando. Uh, what is the present tax rate? And from 1st of December, what is the tax rate applicable? Um, I think we touched on this previously. So the tax applicable at the moment uh, is 15%. And given uh, that the BOI agreement in place, uh, they will continue to pay 15% going forward. Uh, they're moving on. There's a question from uh, Mr. Jai Sekhara. What is LIOC's competitive advantage over CPC? Uh, Hasta, can you take this question? Yeah. Uh, so mainly uh, the differential uh, in the pricing comes from the uh, interest cost per liter uh, for CPC and LIOC. So CPC, I think uh, 
there's an interest cost of around 15 rupees a liter, uh, given that they have around 624 billion of debt. And obviously with the current uh, uh, hike in interest rates, <coughs> sorry, the interest cost is quite significant. Whereas uh, LIOC over the first half of FY23, they have reduced that debt down to around 9 billion. <coughs> so there's a 4% margin differential just coming from the interest cost differential. So that is uh, LIFC's main uh, uh, differential uh, and the reason why they have higher margins compared to CPC through the uh, pricing formula. There is a question from uh, Mr. Susil Pires. All these figures are indicated in rupees without considering the rupee depreciation. Do you think it's better to indicate in US dollar terms? Uh, Haspa, can you? Uh, sorry, say that again. Uh, the, all these figures in terms of our forecasts are indicated in rupees without considering the yeah. depreciation. Do you think it's better to indicate in US dollar terms? So auto fools amounts around more than 80% of the uh, sales. Uh, and auto fools, obviously, the retail pricing is uh, quoted in rupees. So the selling happens in rupees. Uh, and for that reason, we can be forecast uh, uh, the PNL in rupees. Or, but obviously, the bunkering sales, for example, is in dollars. So when we are forecasting the bunkering segment, we will assume various exchange rates for the future. So then the depreciation or expected depreciation will be accounted for in our forecast accordingly. Thank you, Asim. Uh, there's a question from Mr. Dinesh Pereira. At what rate is LIOC actually getting their dollars? Has the situation improved? Was there any preferential access of the Indian credit line given to LIOC that might not continue in the next quarters? Um, so I can take that question. Sure. Uh, so uh, to our knowledge, uh, the discussion we've had with various treasuries uh, at banks, the dollar liquidity has improved uh, in the recent past especially for basic essentials. Uh, for example, uh, the government was able to raise the required funds for various uh, uh, coal tenders as well as uh, uh, full tenders uh, and uh, make various payments. So the rate will be the uh, current exchange rate uh, offered by the banks. So uh, there is no real preferential rate as such or uh, a big premium paid for that will be uh, based on the market pricing. Uh, with regards to the Indian credit line, uh, I we have no information on that, whether they had access to the Indian credit line. But I think uh, uh, the funds are raised through the, the local banking system. Thank you, Uh There's a question from Mr. Kumar Bharati. Where do you think LIOC will end up in December? It closed at 180 yesterday. Um, so we are unable to predict uh, the share prices and its movement. It's dependent on a lot of things, uh, including sentiment, uh, trade flows, and things like that. So we are unable to comment in terms of where the price will be heading. Um, there's a question from Mr. Mohammed Zawahir. What is the Forex earning details uh, on the forecast? Uh, I think, Hasi, you may have previously touched on this, but if you can uh, just elaborate a little bit on this. Uh, sorry, do you mind saying that again? Uh, what is the Forex earning details? Yeah. Depending to consideration. Yeah, so the Forex earnings, as uh, we said before, there are two elements. One is from the bunkering segment, where they have, I think, 33% market share in the uh, local bunkering market. That's priced in dollars. And also on top of that, uh, the industrial sales happens in dollars as well. So... Uh, in the second quarter, I think 40% of auto full sales was in uh, uh, these industrial customers, which were in dollars. Uh, but in the third quarter, we are expecting that to reduce significantly. Uh, then, depending on uh, the power outages uh, during the dry season, this can increase once again. So, uh, we have accounted for that. And uh, we have been quite conservative in terms of the industrial sales, where we are expecting that to reduce considerably over the second half. Uh, and that's our view on the dollar sales. Thanks, Pastor. Uh, there's a question from Mr. Stevenson Fernando. How would you view the competition and pricing of fuel to turn out following uh, initiation of other global players in the market in the following years? Um, so I think we may have touched on this earlier. 
Um, like we mentioned, uh, for a new player to enter, we feel it will take about at least 18 to 24 months. However, at point of entry, uh, various strategies can be adopted. Uh, there could be undercutting, uh, things like that to grow their market share. Uh, so that we will have to assist at that point in time. I think uh, there's a question again from Mr. Dinesh Pereira. Are volumes in this quarter a lot higher than the last quarter? Uh, can't that contribute to higher profits, although at a lower GP margin? Uh, so in terms of volume, what's, uh, uh, we're actually not expecting a increase in volumes as such in this quarter. Uh, as we said before, uh, there can be actually a contraction in volumes to some extent because of the industrial sales reducing uh, with a uh, uh, lower number of power cuts uh, in uh, the third quarter because of the continuous rain and uh, more contribution from hydroelectric. Uh, that has resulted in industrial sales reducing uh, quite a bit. So that is one of our reasons that we're assuming lower profitability in the third quarter compared to the second quarter because of the contracting uh, contraction in industrial sales. So that will con contribute to lower volumes and lower GP. Uh, there's a question from Mr. Mohammed Zawahir, who is the market leader in lubricants. What is LIOC status? Uh, so in terms of lubricants, the market leader Chevron, um, as per, I think, last year numbers, they control around 50% of the market. Um, LIOC is the second largest player with around 27% market share. Uh, with the introduction um, of their grease plant, we expect this uh, segment to, to actually record very strong performance going forward. Um, there's one more question, I think, on uh, from Mr. Dinesh Perra. Have sales to the airline sector begun? Uh, so jet fuel, um, uh, we haven't actually uh, accounted for any jet fuel sales in our forecast. Uh, we need to touch upon that and get some uh, management insight as well uh, on the contribution coming from jet fuel. Uh, but we don't uh, uh, see that being significant uh, revenue contribution coming from that segment in FI23. Uh, so for that reason, uh, we have uh, excluded that. I think that's all the questions at the moment. Uh, and if there are no more questions, uh, we can uh, draw the Q&A to a close. Back to you, Prashani. Since there are no further questions, I would now like to close the webinar. On behalf of Capital Trust Research Private Limited, I wish to extend a sincere thank you to our valued clients for their participation and the staff who helped to organize this webinar. Hope to see you soon at our next webinar. Have a nice day.